had I known what the Toronto real estate market stats would have looked like, I would have made a Halloween costume out of them because things are not looking pretty. Now, obviously, it depends if you're a seller or a buyer or just an innocent bystander, but it's a bit of a train wreck. We've hit some record lows in some metrics. I'm going to get into the details of the three to four variables that actually matter. I'll give you the context that you need and I'll cut through all the noise so that you can understand what is likely going to happen over the next, I don't know, three to six months. As always, my name is Vass. I'm a real estate broker right here in the city of Toronto where I help investors and families navigate our market. Before getting into the charts and the data, I will give you some examples of anecdotally what I'm seeing from buyers and sellers so that you better understand their behavior. I've talked about this in the past. We're seeing a second wave of buyer fatigue. And what is it? So in the past, buyer fatigue was when buyers would constantly be competing for listings and they would be competing with other people, multiple bids, and they would get fatigued from all the competition. They would sit out and say, you know what, forget it. I will wait until the market is calmer. The buyer fatigue we're having now, or at least the one I'm witnessing with my own buyer clients is that you have a lot of sellers with unrealistic expectations. So the market's very fluid right now. Things are changing. You're having some big price decreases in some areas and some listings, but not all sellers are willing to sell at what they perceive as a loss, despite it not really being a loss. It's just what the market is. Is. But effectively, you have sellers with this expectations and then buyers trying to come in here with uh, front running a discount. You know, they want to get the property for five to 10% less. So because they may be anticipating that the market is going to continue dropping. So as a buyer, you don't want to buy something. And then by the time you close, it's already worth less money than what you paid for it. And then on the seller side, from what I can see, Sellers that were listed this fall, a lot of them didn't have to sell. They, they obviously wanted to sell. They wanted to see what the market's going to do. But now you're seeing a lot of terminations and listings coming off the market for those that don't have to sell. And they're likely going to be looking at relisting in the spring. And they're just going to sit this winter out and see where the market settles next spring. And with that said, let's start looking into the data. And by the way, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so and like the video so that I know you're getting some value out of this. Now let's get into the price changes. This is the graph I spend the least amount of time on. And because I've talked about this in the past, this is a misleading graph. And the reason for that is our sales volume is so low that the sales mix, meaning cheap properties versus expensive properties, it's so out of whack that anything to do with pricing right now, it's very difficult to analyze unless you get super granular. So last, last month, what we had found out is that prices actually looked like they went up. And then after deep diving the data, we found out that the reason they went up from 5.10% to 8.11% is that we simply sold more homes than we did condos in that month. So effectively just skewed the median price much higher. Right now, condos are flooding uh, the market. There's a ton of inventory and they're not sell selling very well. And I believe this continues to be a trend here where prices look like they're flat. But in reality, I think prices are actually going down. It's just that the sales mix that is skewing this information. We're going to see this develop uh, into the coming months, but do I do expect prices to continue going down well into December? Now for this type of market, this is probably one of my favorite charts and we're gonna talk about new listings versus actual sales. So the red line right here, this is the typical trend line of new listings. How many new listings come on the market? And the red dotted line is the new listings actuals for 2023. And as you can see in the spring up until about June, we were well below where we should have been in terms of new listings. And then starting in June, July, August, we're basically back at seasonal trend line. So right here in September, we actually had a few more new listings that came on the market. But the important thing is that we're following the trend. So it's starting to drop off right now into October. And I do expect new listings to continue declining going into December. So not much news here. We basically were back at trend. Not a big deal. It's a little bit higher than typical, maybe by 10%. But again, not that material. What is material, however, is right here is the green line, which is the total amount of sales. So as you can see, ever since the beginning of 2023, we have been trending at well below seasonal sales. So we have been selling a lot less and it actually got much worse to starting July going into October. Right now, we're actually operating at roughly 50 to 60% of the sales that we typically do. In fact, this October is the lowest October on record that I could see going 15 years back in terms of the level of sales. We have never sold this few homes in the month of October in the past. Now, what this ends up creating is because of our lack of absorption, you have a bunch of listings that continue to sit and they sit stale and sellers getting a little bit more and more desperate. And that leads us to the next graph in terms of what this actually translates into. Our active listings, and this number is starting to break trends. So up until now, our active listings were actually 
you know below trend and then in september they were at trend but in october this number is going to continue growing and i suspect it's going to continue continue growing into november and december not necessarily going up but i think it's going to be higher than we where we seasonally are and the reason for this is when listings don't sell they just remain on the market especially for those that need to sell so you end up with more active listings on average than you usually have now one thing to look at is sales relative to active listings and this is where the, my biggest concern is especially if you're a seller and this is why i think there's going to be a lot more by the way of price decreases going into the future if we're currently operating below seasonal norms so if we're selling 4500 homes instead of 8000 homes and our active inventory is almost at 20,000 instead of dropping to 17 and then 14,000 into the coming months what ends up happening is you right now we're selling roughly 25 percent of the homes that are actively on the market typically this time of the year we're selling 45 to 50 percent that are actually on the market this obviously puts sellers in a very precarious position because you're getting nervous especially going into the winter where sales typically die off and there's not much activity if you need to sell then what are you kind of left with as an option you basically have to price reduce until you get somebody to come in and purchase your home for a big discount this is why i'm a believer that we're in for more price reductions towards the tail end of 2023 and the beginning of 2024 as far as the springtime it's going to be hard to tell what's going to happen but if the market continues at the pace that it's at right now things are obviously not looking good especially into the short term i hope you enjoyed this video and i'll see you in the next one